What's up, you guys? Welcome to today's video. As you can tell by the title, we're going to be talking about the fact that Brian Laundrie was finally found. His remains were found. We're going to be going over what a convicted felon, me, thinks about this case and all of that stuff. If you guys are new here, hi, my name is Jess. I'm a person in long-term recovery who has served time in prison and my entire crazy life story is in the description box down below. If you wanna follow me on any other social media platform, TikTok, Instagram, Patreon, that's $2. It's only ever gonna be $2. All of that is linked down below as well as my podcast and my vlog channel. I am also a proud partner with Groups Recover Together, which is a both online and in-person treatment program. It strongly leans on harm reduction. They're 420 friendly and they're an amazing team of people. My landing page of them is in the description box of this video. All right, let's kick this thing off because it has more twists and turns than like a soap opera. Okay, I'm going to put timestamps on the screen right here. I'm going to be reading you the timeline of everything that happened. I also filmed a video on this as well. I mean, everyone on the internet has filmed a video on this, but um, I promised you guys in that video that I would follow up with you once Brian was found. Here's the timeline of this case. Now that the remains of Brian Laundrie have been positively identified by authorities, there are still lingering questions as to why, how, and even when he disappeared in the days after his fiance Gabby Petito was reported missing. His parents, Chris and Roberta Laundrie, may be vital to unraveling the mysteries, but their recollections of key moments during these crucial days, according to their family attorney, have been inconsistent or conflicted with law enforcement authorities versions of, of events. The Laundrie family has conducted themselves in a very odd way that's generated a lot of suspicion right from the beginning, former FBI Director Andrew McCain told CNN. The undisputed facts are that Brian Laundrie, 23, and Gabby Petito, 22, had been road tripping in a white van from New York through the U.S. West over the summer, regularly posting photos and stories to their social media pages with the hashtag van life. Those posts abruptly stopped in late August, and police say Laundrie returned September 1st in the couple's van without his fiance to Northport, Florida, where he lived with Petito and his parents. Petito's family reported her missing September 11th, and her body was found September 19th in Wyoming's Bridger, uh, Bridgerton National Forest. A coroner ruled that she died of strangulation. Inside the nine-day period in September, Laundrie left his family home, and differing accounts have emerged from the Laundrie family's attorney and the police about what occurred in the narrow period within the time frame from September 13th to September 17th. Here's what each says happened during those four days. When in mid-September, did Brian leave the home? Laundrie and his family did not immediately speak with police when given the opportunity. Red flag. On September 11th, after Petito's family reported her missing, Laundrie invoked his Fifth Amendment right when police went to the Laundrie home. Northport Police Chief Todd Garrison told CNN, invoking the Fifth Amendment means a person cannot be forced to make statements they feel might be negative or used against them. Investigators were never in the same room as Laundrie after Petito went missing, Northport Police said. Then on September 14th, Laundrie said that he, he was going to a nearby Carlton Reserve. Uh, the parents told police on September 17th, adding they hadn't seen him since. The reserve is a 25,000 acre natural park near the family's home, a swampy forested area known to contain snakes and alligators. But Laundrie's parents, after further communication with the FBI and confirmation of the family's car being at the laundry residence on Wednesday, September 15th, Brian believed left home on September 13th, their family attorney said. Laundry's father, Chris, went to look for Brian on the night of September 13th after his son didn't return from the park. The next day, September 14th, Chris and Roberta Laundry returned to the area outside Myahatchee Creek Environmental Park to look for him and found the family's Ford Mustang with an abandoned vehicle notice planned on it. The parents returned the next day, September 15th, to, ret to retrieve the vehicle. Let the record be clear. The laundry reported Brian did not come home the night he went out for the hike. I actually reported to the FBI personally. After more than a month of searching the reserve, authorities found laundry's remains Wednesday along with personal items, including a backpack and a notebook. Where did police think Brian Laundry was then? Northport police had no information Laundry was missing on September 13th and believed that he was at the house, spokesperson Josh Taylor told CNN in a statement Thursday, noting the department was an assisting agency in the investigation until the night of September 14th. We were certainly pressing hard to get information from the family through traditional means, Taylor's statement read. We were working with the best of intelligence on what we thought at the time, working with a family who refused to cooperate in the investigation. 
Garrison, the Northport police chief, tried to reach out to Bertolano on Twitter on September 15th. The department never got a response from Bertolano. Garrison held a news conference on September 16th. During the briefing, a reporter asked Garrison if he knew where Laundrie was right now. Yes, Garrison responded. On September 17th, the FBI called Bertolano to say it had gotten a tip that Laundrie was in Tampa, the attorney said Wednesday. This is a very long article. Okay, so I'm gonna scroll down to here. Laundrie's parents' role in search is under scrutiny. And now this is where it's so freaking strange and so odd. After reporting Batito missing, her family and police publicly pleaded with the Laundrie family to cooperate with authorities. But Bertolano had advised his clients not to speak with anyone, the lawyer said on Wednesday. Everybody has the right to remain silent, he told CNN. That's what I told my clients and that's what they did. Still, experts have found it curious that Chris and Roberta Laundrie participated in the investigation and discovery of their son's remains. During a search with police Wednesday at the Nature Reserve, Laundrie's father was first to spot an item belonging to his son, Taylor said Thursday. Because he couldn't find law enforcement when he found the bag and didn't want to leave it, he picked it up and gave it to investigators. Okay, weird, strange. The idea of family members participating in the search and then being the ones that actually find the evidence and then picking it up and taking it to law enforcement is quite unusual. The parents are key to determining how he died, he said, and whether or not this was by his own hands or accidental. I mean, why are the parents a vital resource for that? I think a lot of people had conspiracy theories on Gabby's disappearance because during an active investigation, there wasn't a lot that the law enforcement uh, people leading this case could actually say, right? So, Eventually, they found her body, which was not far from where the van had been spotted by YouTubers. And to back up here a little bit, you know, law enforcement were called and the 911 call clearly says this man is hitting this woman in a white van, right? So she goes missing. YouTubers spot this van. They eventually find Gabby's body. May she rest in peace. Um, and during the course of this investigation, we're like, what was the cause of death? What was the cause of death? The reason why they couldn't put a ton of details out is because it was an open investigation. Um, so once they determined that the cause of death was strangulation, then everyone was like, yep, we knew it, it's homicide. Brian's the person uh, that killed Gabby. Everyone thinks that, everyone, including myself. Okay, but all of the conspiracy theories around what actually happened with Gabby were just crazy online because the media and law enforcement couldn't really say all the details surrounding this open investigation. And Brian was only a person of interest in this case. He wasn't charged with anything. I think the reason why Brian wasn't immediately charged with the murder of Gabby was because his DNA would have been on her body. They were dating and living together in that van, right? So they had a lot of circumstantial evidence, which is so hard. Circumstantial evidence would be that, you know, Brian was the last person to see her allegedly and we don't really know, or this family member or that family member says that this relationship was toxic, or Brian left with the van, you know? Um, so there was, there were, all signs lead to Brian is the person that killed her, right? So then all of these conspiracy theories started happening with Brian because he went missing and he took off in the Carlton Reserve. What is so odd is that even after Brian's remains were found, it's like the media didn't immediately come out and say, we found a femur, a skull, and some teeth. They were just like, skeletal bones have been found. Now we have figured out that this is in fact Brian. Why is it so hard to say like, we found, this is exactly what we found. We found a notebook, the notebook said this. Uh, we found clothes that were his. Like, why was that so hard, okay? And it is super, super, super strange that the FBI would even allow the parents to search the Carlton Reserve for their son. Okay, so super weird that his father found the backpack and then very close to this backpack, human re remains were found that we now know to be Brian's. Oh my God, that is just very sus. And I, I did see an article, I don't know if we can find it or pull it up, but there were cadaver dogs and there were so much going into these searches. They were searching for Brian for over a month. And the day that the park opens back up, his parents go out there and find the backpack and then very close to that backpack, remains were found. Why? So weird, right? So now the entire internet is popping off with all of these conspiracy theories because this is, this is just the weirdest case with so many twists and turns. He goes missing, everyone is looking for him, he was spotted in Alabama and spotted in Tampa and like these, you know, there was more sightings of him than Elvis. It was just crazy. So 
All of these theories definitely don't help this case, but I understand why everyone has these, these conspiracy theories. I have a theory and we're gonna get into it in a minute, but this case just has so many twists and turns. So many things don't sound right. I got on TikTok a few days ago and people were saying that he was buried in the garden or there was an underground bunker. Like that's how far these conspiracy theories have gone. And it's just so crazy. Some people think that um, they had Brian's baby teeth. They scattered out there with like, a random bone that was confirmed not true um so there's just so many conspiracy theories that obviously don't help gabby's family move on and mourn and it's just so awful before we get into my theory i do want to say that other bodies were found while searching for brian i think there were four or five bodies found in the carlton reserve like five people that were missing were found and that brings closure to five other families so while there is no positive in this case it's awful you know, at least five families get to um, have closure with the disappearance of their loved ones. It's just so awful. Um, another thing that people were saying was, well, there's no way this body can decompose that fast. You can't just go to Google and type in how long does it take for a body to decompose because there are so many variables. There are so many variables, weather, water, heat, animals. Um, there's just so many things that can cause a body to decompose. I didn't think he would be a pile of bones this fast either, you know, but when you when you factor in all of the variables with the humidity and the heat of Florida and the water and everything else, it's possible that after um, he was dead that a gator grabbed him or something. I don't know. I'm not a swamp expert. <laughs> so again, so many twists and turns in this story. I could not believe when his remains were found. And to back up, like this is why it's so hard for me to understand that the parents found the backpack and then the remains were found close to the backpack, right? It's so hard for me to wrap my head around because literally everyone was looking for this person for a month. Even Dog the Bounty Hunter showed up and he was absolutely useless in this investigation. I think he just showed up for like publicity or something. I like Dog, he cool, but he was useless here. Let's admit it, it is what it is, right? I think a lot of people related to this relationship that they saw where everything on social media looks perfect, but underneath the surface, if you scratch the surface an inch, you see a relationship that wasn't perfect and that leans on domestic violence. And I have been criticized saying that, but when I look at that 911 body cam footage, I see a calm man saying that this girl's crazy. And then I listen to the 911 tape and the 911 tape literally says this man is hitting this woman. I see a girl that is afraid. I see a girl that has been abused, I, like emotionally abused, physically abused. I see a woman that wants to cover for her, for her abuser. That's what I see. And I know, I know what these signs look like. And I know, I know a lot of people are like, you don't know that you were in that relationship. You're right, I wasn't. But if you've been a victim of emotional or physical abuse, you know those signs. And I think officers need to be trained on how to handle domestic violence. Experts have come out and say, you know, this looks like domestic violence as well. So that theory of mine did not come out of the clear blue sky. That came out of my own experience and from, for studying psychology for all the years that I've studied psych psychology and narcissistic abuse. That's where that came from. And although I am no expert, it looked to me like she was covering for her abuser. Okay, so let's go to my theory. This is my theory on how it was possible for Brian's parents to find this body. And yes, I know that apparently they had told law enforcement he liked to camp at this area, but I did see online conflicting stories where these handlers of, you know, the cadaver dog handlers said, we searched that area already. And yes, it was underwater, but the dog would have found this, the remains or what have you. So I have seen online people that were involved in the search adamantly say, we searched that area and found nothing before. That's why, again, all these conspiracy theories are popping up, right? So my theory is that the parents struck a deal with the FBI for full immunity. That is how the feds work. Um, They're tired of searching for this. They're tired of pressing them for information. You know, the, the parents lawyered up immediately immediately lawyer, lawyered up. I know that it is very difficult to turn in your kid after, you know, a potential crime like this has happened. Allegedly, we don't know. We'll, we're never going to know what happened, right? This is all speculation. You know, it's must be very difficult to want to turn in your kid. You automatically want to protect them, but not for nothing if my son came home without his girlfriend and she was left in Wyoming and I think that he hurt her. 
I'm going to look for my son's girlfriend. I am going to find him. I'm going to drag him by the freaking ear and we're going to go find his girlfriend. I'm just saying. So my theory is the parents struck a deal for full immunity. Like, oh, we'll go help you find where we think the remains are. We don't believe that he is alive and we're going to go find him and we want full immunity if we find him. It just sounds like it. The, the feds strike deals all the time. And of course, I have no idea. This is just my theory from seeing everything that I've seen. I am no expert. I am just a chick with a camera on the internet. What the hell do I know, right? But it just feels to me like the parents struck a deal for immunity. Will they come out and say that? I don't know. I, they don't have, the feds don't have to release that information. W would they? Maybe. A case of this size? I'm not exactly sure. You know, I don't know if there was a deal, you know, that says this does not reach the media or we don't want this out. We want this private. We'll sign, we'll sign this full immunity deal as long as it doesn't go to the media. I mean, the deal can say whatever they have agreed upon behind closed doors. I think the entire country wants to know what the hell happened in the first place, right? We want to know what happened, but we're never going to get answers. I wanted to see Brian arrested. Um, I wanted to see this investigation happen. I wanted to see the trial. I wanted to know what happened, and I think so many people did. I'm sure Gabby's friends and family want to know what actually happened because all they have right now is strangulation was the cause of death. Gabby's family was also very adamant in wanting to shed light to the other missing people in this country because there's so many missing people that don't get you know, found or don't get the, the justice they deserve. Their families don't get the closure they deserve. There is no positive to Brian being found dead because now you know we'll never truly know what happened to Gabby. That's my theory, that's my thoughts. I told you guys I would update you. Um, I'm probably not going to ever make another video on this case. My heart is with the Petito family. I can't imagine what they're going through. It has been such a roller coaster, I'm sure. I know the whole country mourns with the Petito family. I'm gonna end today's video here. As always, I love you guys. Stay safe, stay in recovery, whatever that looks like to you. And I will see you in my next one.